Hi guys, welcome to Xterna's Corner. My name's Terry, and in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the um, all wire cages that I've been working on. Uh, these cages are going to be used strictly in my uh, my breeding projects. Uh, the cage measures 36 inches wide and 20 inches deep. It also has a divider down the center, so you're getting two cages uh, per tier. Um, the floor is uh, half inch by one inch coated hardware cloth um, that also has an egg rollout tray on the front so all your eggs roll forward making collecting the eggs real simple. Um, this is going to be a multi-tiered setup, um, probably two or three cages high. I haven't made up my mind yet. Most likely three, but you can build it um, as many tiers as you want following these, uh, these instructions. Uh, you notice here the cage on the top has wire extended up past the top of the cage and what that is for is to guide your trays in uh, when you're sliding your trays in and out. Also we're going to have uh, metal deflector shields which will deflect the manure into the tray and prevent the ver birds from pooping out the side of the cage or even out the back of the cage. Um, as far as waters and feeders go, I think I'm going to uh, plumb the back side of the cages with half inch PVC and then just use two of the watering cup style waters per unit. Originally I was going to go with the nipples, um, but I don't think I, I, I want to do that. Um, as far as feeders go, the feeder is going to be a trough style feeder on the front of the cage where the birds can just stick their heads through the wire and uh, you know get out of the feeder. Feeder will also be able to lift up in case you have any eggs that don't uh, quite roll all the way forward. So let me go ahead and get set up here. I want to show you the materials and uh, whatnot that I used to put this thing together and uh, go over some of the measurements and just the basic technique of assembling this unit. Okay so as far as material uh, what you're going to need is uh, depending on how many cages you want to build, uh, you're going to need a roll of one inch by two inch um, welded wire, and you're also going to need a roll of a half inch by one inch coated hardware cloth, and that'll be for the floor. Um, I ordered 100 foot rolls of wire, and I think I figured out that I could build um, 33 units out of 100 foot of wire. So. Uh, it, it's very cost effective uh, to buy more wire uh, because you're going to be able to get a lot more uh, units out of it. Uh, but basically, uh, we're going to start out by cutting out the tops of our cages, which um, on the uh, one inch by two inch wire, you want to cut out a piece that measures 36 by 36 inches. And what I use to cut the wire with is a... Uh, angle grinder with a, uh, a diamond blade on it. Um, you don't have to use an angle wire or angle grinder. Uh, you can use a uh, regular set of uh, wire cutters or a pair of wire cutters. Uh, your standard wire cutters might take you a little bit longer to, uh, to cut the wire, but these will work just fine. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by making our bends on our wire and I found that to make the cleanest bends um, what I use if, if you don't have a metal break which I don't uh, I just take a piece of uh, two by two and stick it underneath the wire where I want it <clears throat> and uh, then I take another two by two that's got uh, holes drilled in it with screws in it and I clamp it down between these two pieces and uh, that just gives you a nice straight edge to where you can uh, make your your bends so the first bend that we're going to make you're going to count up five uh, two inch spaces so it's going to be ten inches up to your your first bend uh, let me get my drill hooked up here and this ten inch piece is going to be the face of our cages but basically just uh, 
align your, your wood and then run the screw down through it. Okay, what I use um, is a rubber mallet and basically just go along the edge and uh, slightly tap it down to where you start to get a bend. Once you get a bend, you can actually come and kind of push it down with your hand. So when you order this uh, wire, the uh, one inch by two inch wire, uh, you wanna order a 36 inch tall roll. Uh, less than that, uh, it's not gonna give you as much floor space in the cage. I guess you could get by with 24. They'll give you 10 for the front, but it's only gonna leave you 14 inches uh, deep. Your, your cage will be uh, 14 inches deep. So I would recommend going with the 36 inch, that way you can get a 20 inch floor in there. Now, you're probably saying, well, 20 inches and 10 inches is, is 30, what, what happens to the extra six? We do have to cut off uh, some of the uh, wire off the back side of the cage. Okay, so there's the front of our cage and the top. And like I say, we're gonna have to cut a little bit off the back of our cage. So we're gonna measure that and that's gonna be 20 inches from this point back. We're gonna measure 20 inches and we're going to uh, cut that off. And it kind of helps to have a, a Sharpie with you. Um, just makes it a little bit easier to mark where your cuts have to be. <clears throat> now on the bottom piece, I've already got one uh, bent cut out and bent and the bottom piece is also going to be uh, 36 inches wide and 36 inches deep let's see what we've got here it's 26 and 9 and then the one inch for the lip up front so um, it's 36 inches so 36 by 36 also on the bottom piece. Um, then when you go to make your bends on the on the bottom you're gonna make one bend at nine inches and that will be the back side of the cage and then this bend up front uh, it's it's probably I, I bent it right in the middle of two wires so it's actually it's an inch and a half um, I wanted a good lip on the front so the eggs uh, when they roll forward, you know, they've got a, a stop up front. 
Okay, so once you've got your uh, your top piece cut out and your bottom piece cut out and bent uh, to the measurements that you want them, uh, real quick, I'll go over those measurements once again. Um, on the top piece, you're gonna measure up 10 inches and make a bend, and then you're gonna have uh, 20 inches from the front to the back of the cage. So you will need to have trim off a little piece of that. On the bottom of the cage, you are going to have, let me get my tape measure. You are going to have a 10 inch on the back and then a inch and a half um, on the front lip for the uh, egg rollout. Okay, so basically uh, we're just gonna partially assemble this so we can get the rest of our pieces in. What you wanna do is take a uh, J-clip and just line up your top and your back pieces and just put a couple on there. You don't have to you know, put a whole bunch on right now. Just put a couple on there just to kind of hold things in place while you are getting the, uh, the rest of the cage pieces ready and uh, ready for assembly. Okay, I think I'll put one more on the far end. <clears throat> okay, now this front piece uh, here, this 10 inch front piece, it's going to come back five inches from the front. So basically just count one, two, three, four, five. Actually, it'll be five and a half inches because you have that extra half inch. But you're not going to clamp this down. The reason is we've got to lift that up in order for our egg rollouts to uh, roll underneath that front piece. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut out these side pieces. And uh, I'll give you the measurements on those real quick. They are going to be, these side pieces are going to measure 20 inches by 12 inches. So we'll, we'll have uh, 20 inches by 12 inches. I'm gonna go ahead and get those cut out and then we'll come back and uh, show you how we put them on. Okay, so we went ahead and uh, cut out our both side pieces and our center pieces. And again, those, those measure 20 inches by 12 inches tall. Um, <clears throat> you wanna make sure that you save that little leftover piece that you cut off here to get your 20 inches. Uh, those can be used for uh, when we go ahead and install our doors. So what you wanna do now is uh, basically get this thing tacked into place, uh, just putting one of your J clamps back here in this corner and what we need to do on this front piece is we need to raise this up a little bit. So what you want to do is looking down here towards the bottom. Let me bring the camera in a little bit so I can show you because I want this, this part has to be right or for your egg rollout. So let me bring the camera in and uh... <clears throat> okay so what we want to do uh, when we clamp this front on is we want to lift this piece this uh, top piece up high enough to where we've got room underneath there for the eggs to roll out. So what I did was on the second one up, I put a clamp right here. That will allow it only to go up so high. So we've got an inch and probably a half. So we've got about an inch and a half clearance. But what we need to do now is put a clamp up here at the top uh, to hold that in place or it's just gonna wanna drop down again. So let me go ahead and see if I can't get a clamp up top here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me adjust that up a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this piece up and put a clamp right there, and that will hold that up high enough. See how that's held up down there? I don't know if you can see it, but we've got plenty of room for our uh, eggs to roll out. and then maybe a couple more on there just to hold it in place. And what we'll do is we'll go back around. Uh, once we've got the entire cage set up, we'll go back around and uh, clean up all our, our rough edges and also clamp everything down.
<clears throat> okay, so the next piece that we have to put in is our center divider. And in order to do that, we've got to either cut the center divider down to fit. Um, but what I found works actually better than cutting it because then you don't have anywhere to um, attach your um, clamps to, your J clamps, is just mark the front and the back. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our clamp, our, uh, our wood pieces, and we're going to clamp this in there, and then we're going to bend that over flat. And that will go up against the top so it gives us something to clamp to. And the bottom we can obviously clamp right through the bottom of the cage. So let me go ahead and get this bent up, and then I'll show you what it looks like before we stick it inside the cage. Okay, so I want to show you real quick what that looks like. Uh, here's our mark. Let's see if I can find here. Here's our mark on the shallow end, and then it comes up to on the other end. All I did was clamp this in, and now what we'll do is take and bend that over just like we did the other pieces. Okay, so there's what the centerpiece looks like uh, before we put it in. Obviously, it'll go in this way, this being the front. I don't know how well you can see that, this being the front side, this being the back side. So let me get the cage back up here, and I'll show you real quick how we do that. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to measure from the outside edge of the cage. I want to measure in 18 inches, and I'm going to make a mark, and that will show me where where my uh, center divider needs to go. Now, because this mark is going to land in between a one inch space, uh, you need, need to move it over a half inch either way, uh, just so you've got something to, uh, to uh, clamp your center divider to. And basically the easiest way to do that is to take your center divider and we're just going to lift up on this front piece, slide it in, Find our mark. And that's another reason why you don't want to uh, clamp everything down tight right away is you want to make sure that you have uh, everything in position before you lock it down tight. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a clamp right here to hold that. And then I can make a mark on the back side of the cage so I know where the back piece has to go. And maybe one more just for just to hold it in place. Okay, so we've got our center divider in. Um, now we're ready to go ahead and put our last piece um, on this side. And you're basically going to do it the exact same way you did this side. So I'll get that done. And then uh, we've got a a piece we need to put in here we need to get our doors cut out um, but uh, yeah that's basically pretty much it okay so I've got the uh, the final outside wall on um, I also went around and J clamped um, all the edges uh, or most of them many I still got a few left to do uh, and I went ahead and cut out one door opening uh, so real quick I want to show you um, the measurements that we use uh, when cutting out the door openings uh, basically just measure in four inches from the uh, outside edge of it and you're going to cut two of these these pieces here that will give you a total of two four six inches tall for the door opening um, 
Then you're going to come over nine. I believe it's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. You're going to come over nine inches. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we are going to cut these two. And then go along the bottom and the top and cut out the remaining pieces for your door. Okay, so we've got the openings for our door um, cut out. Um, what you need to do also is cut out your doors. Uh, remember that piece that we had left over uh, from cutting our sides? Uh, those were basically like that. Uh, we're going to save those and cut them for the door. So those are going to be 10 inches wide. Let me take off an inch there. And they will be two, four, six inches tall. And what I do after I cut everything out, I'll go back around with the, uh, the angle grinder and just kind of grind down some of those sharp points. Just so when you reach in the cage, you're not going to get cut. Save that for the other door. Okay, so once you've got your openings cut out, you can go ahead and hang your door. And to hang your door, basically just stick it inside the cage and uh, bring it up even with this top rail that you cut out. You're going to have a one inch overlap on each side. That'll keep the door from coming back this way. And then basically just using a couple uh, J clips. you're going to uh, clamp that top rail in place and you don't want to clamp it real tight because you want it to, to be able to pivot on those uh, J clips. And the door, I probably got to put a couple more uh, J clips on there, but the door will basically return to the closed position. And what I'll probably use is some type of a clamp uh, down here to hold the door shut uh, when I'm not in there. So, okay, that's pretty much it for the assembly. Um, you can see we've got our rails sticking up. That's going to allow us to slide our manure tray in. Um, I do need to go around and tighten up this cage a little bit, uh, put some more clamps on there, uh, bend a little bit of the metal so it's a little bit straighter. And it looks like I cut myself already. Uh, so yeah, let me get that tightened up and uh, come back and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to mount this thing inside the, uh, the framework. Um, this looks like it's gonna be a three tier cage. Uh, I got the top, top tier here. And these will be the, the middle and the bottom tiers. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and uh, mount it in the framework and uh, see how it does. Okay guys, so I went ahead and mounted the cages in this uh, temporary uh, rack system that I built. Um, the reason I say temporary is I'm gonna tear it all apart and I'm going to epoxy and paint all this woodwork. Uh, that's going to waterproof it and also keep it from absorbing smells um, or any type of pest that could be get burrowed into the wood. Um, when I mounted the cages, what I used was an inch and a quarter fender washer, and you can see it up here in the corner. I've got uh, one up here. I still don't have one down here, but there's, there's one at the top, one at the bottom, and same on the back, one at the top and one on the bottom. Um, the only thing you want to make sure you do is when you're mounting your cages that you have enough of a slope so your eggs will roll forward. I've got about uh, an inch to an inch and a quarter of, of slope rolling forward in 20 inches. So that should be more than enough to uh, get the eggs to roll forward. Uh, also what I did was I installed on this cage, I gotta do the other two, uh, manure deflectors around the outside of the cage. 
And basically all that is, is a four inch piece of roof, roof flashing. Um, you can pick up a roll of roof flashing for like $10 at Home Depot and it'll do all, more than uh, this setup anyhow. Uh, but basically I cut it down to four inch strip and uh, tie wired it all around the outside edge of the, uh, the cage. And hopefully that'll keep any manure from the birds backing up to the wire and trying to poop out the cage. Um, the water system is the same basic uh, watering system that I've used on all my previous cages. Uh, it's basically just the poultry watering cups. I've got two cups per cage, uh, just in case one should fail. It's we've got a backup. Um, and it'll be set up the same way, five gallon bucket on top of the cage, and it'll feed all these units from that one five gallon bucket. Um, the manure trays are the same standard automotive drip trays that I've used in my other cages. And uh, I've got some ordered right now. The auto parts store was out of them, but I've got them ordered now and they should be here hopefully pretty soon. But basically when I put the tray in, I line it up with the, uh, the front of the cage below it. And that allows it to hang out over the back about four inches. And the top cage, um, that tray is lined up. It's about splitting this uh, egg rollout. So it should have plenty of room, shouldn't have to worry about manure, uh, you know, pooping off of the front of the cage and down into the feeder below it, which I have had that problem before uh, with some other cages. Um, the egg rollouts, um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but what I did was cut a piece of the flooring material and J clipped it along this side edge here. And that's just to keep the eggs from you know rolling off the edge. I imagine you could bend up that side and it would do the same thing, but I got plenty of wire, so I just cut out a piece and, and, and uh, clipped it in there. Um, the one other thing I did, and this is just a test, um, along this front edge, I bought a piece of 316 steel dowel and I J clipped it along this front edge of this cage here. And that's just to kind of stiffen up that, that front piece there. Uh, I, you can see right here, it's a little bit wobbly and it, it probably would be fine, but I thought for $3 for that little piece of dowel, I'll just go ahead and clamp it in there and that'll you know tighten up the front of that cage pretty good. Okay guys, so I hope that gave you a little better understanding of what's involved in building your own uh, wire cages. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. Uh, I try to get in there and answer questions as often as possible. Um, I do want to say, though, that uh, by building your own cages, you can save considerably over purchasing commercially produced cages. Um, I purchased two 100-foot rolls of wire, uh, one roll of 1x2 and one roll of half by one coated. I think it cost me right around $375 for both them rolls, but I figured out that I could build 10 and a half of these complete units for that money. So uh, your cost savings is going to be enormous uh, if you take the time to build your own cages. So guys, if you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. I try to get in there and answer them uh, you know, as much as possible. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out and you can get notified of any new and upcoming videos as long as you hit that notification bell. Um, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you on the next one.